Okay, a short PLC video. This is a request video about Modicon timers and block moves. So let's get right into it. So I've taken, uh, I've, I've prepped this network here for you guys to look at. And let's get down here. Um, pretty basic network. So what I wanted to show you, I'm just going to go top to bottom left to right and show you what I'm looking at here. The um, I got a I've got two different kinds of move instructions. This is a really common one that I see. This is what I, I commonly see when we're just moving one value around where I work. You could do a block move for this, but a sub is a lot faster as a far as far I'm sorry as an instruction. If you're just doing like one, basically, block move is basically copy. You can use sub if you're going to do one or two instructions. And it, I guess back in the day when they had execution tables, this was much faster of a way to do a move, is to do a subtraction of an, a number or a register by zero into a target. So if you just wanted to load 178 in the register 40101, this was the fastest way to do it. And I see it all over the place in logic in my plant. Subs of zero. It's just a move instruction is all it really is. Or a copy. You can see I have a little logic here. It's just kind of just to create toggling intervals. Um, there's multiple different timers. There's three timers, a T1, a T0.1, and a T0, uh, T.01. So this is a hundredths base, a tenths base, and then there's a, a whole second base timer. So when you go to create a timer, let's do that real quick. Um, so if we go up here, if we go up here, I don't think we can put it on that side of the coil. All right, let's grab um, a timer, drop it right here. It's going to ask you what you want the top to be. Well, if you don't know what that means, you can go to instruction help. But what it means is, what do you want the um, the the load the target value to be, or the prefix um, in Alan Bradley? So if you want it to be 100 milliseconds, um, 100 milliseconds would be, this would be only one here. But you have to put a pound sign, then one. So that's actually going to be 1.1 second time. And then the bottom, what bottom is, it shows you it has to be a 4,000. It, 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 this is the accumulator. So you can click used. And go to your used table, and you can see we're looking at the bits. These are bits right here. These are also bits, but they're input bits. These are um, usually your analog inputs, maybe analog outputs. And then these are your internal word coils. So if we any of these with a dot in them, they're available. Just pick one, you know, double click it, and boom, you're you're good there. You can use a variable. You could use a um, an address in here it shows you, you can use any address you want you can even load values in from um, these are the discrete values right here and then you could load in variable values but let's keep going now how to turn it on um, you can see here um, power is coming across the top of this subtraction and because you're subtracting by zero you'll always have the top pin here because your number is greater than zero so this is greater than the middle, equal to the middle, and less than the middle as far as a subtra subtraction. All right, so these three, will it'll change based on if this were a variable. So power across the top, and then um, you'll see here this this pin. Let me get off of there. This pin here is the, uh, basically, go ahead and time or reset. So if this, if this pin is made low, it, it will reset the accumulator. It'll time when 
it'll time when basically the top pin and the bottom pin are made. And if the bottom pin is lost, your accumulator resets. If the bottom pin is not lost, so you have different logic here that keeps this on, then and you lose the top pin, basically your counter will freeze like a retentive timer in Allen Bradley, basically. And then when um, <clears throat> when you're not either you're not enabled or you're not yet done, this pin will be passing power. And when you reach, see like that, and then when you reach time, this one will turn on. And that's where usually your coils go for a timer done uh, signal. Okay, so then I bring this down here. And here's a black move. This is, um, so a black move is a kind of like an array copy. Um, basically, you tell it in the setup. It says you can start with, you can move bits, you can move um, words. In my case, I'm moving word word 101 into word 151, and I'm doing it for six words. The length here is six. So basically, I'm taking 101 through 106, and I'm putting them into 151 to 156. All right. And to show that, if I go to right click somewhere and do a register editor, it will come up. And uh, right here you can see 101 is that 178 from up here in the subtraction. And then you can see a number of accumulators running. Um, kind of. <laughs> this software is not the best up update time, but see that 484 there, that's that 500. Um, timer. I did want to note that this 50.1 and this 500.01 are the same real time duration because of the different bases. So these are being copied every time this block move is being is enabled. Every time the scan comes down and this is enabled, it does the block move copy. So if we go down here, you'll see 40151 and all the way through 40156, which is unused. But you can see that these numbers are changing. Hey, caught it right on 500. Okay, the, the 178 won't change because that's a static one. But um, these numbers are changing. See, so that's how a black move works. You could have accomplished the, uh, the sub. Um, you could use six subs to do this, or you could use a black move to do one. But um, black moves are a little bit more. Uh, intensive instruction so people if they're just being quick and dirty they'll use a sub yeah. honestly I don't see a lot of times people are moving uh, it happens but I don't see a lot of times people moving inputs and outputs with block moves I guess you could do it if you were going to move inputs into like internal coils I'm sorry internal bits and then maybe internal coils into real outputs I don't know you could do it that way um, but that's what those two instructions are, and then the the, um, the timers, they're pretty simple too. So you can see this timer is out in the middle of nowhere, and there's nothing on this power pin. So how do I get power to it? Well, you could uh, go here. you got to be in program mode, by the way, which you probably, probably know, versus monitor. Okay, you when you go online, which is usually in monitor only. Let's see, let's pull power... From, let's do a short. Now there's going to be power most of the time. This can get pretty ugly if you are kind of a messy person, <laughs> which I tend to be. There, I got power to it. <laughs> now it'll run. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's that's all you got to do. Now, I'm sorry, it won't run until I put this short in there. Now it's going to run. Okay, that's all it is. Um, those, those those two instructions. Hope that helped. Hope it wasn't too boring. And um, these are pretty pretty comprehensive. They're full feature uh, PLCs, but uh, they're primitive. Uh, but they are powerful enough. So have a good one.